What is up, guys? Off Nerd Joe here, back again with another Monday Night Rewind podcast where we go back 20 years to the Monday Night Wars and cover Raw from 1998, and then we hit the fast forward button and come into 2018 and cover some current news and topics within the wrestling business. But as usual, we will start out with the rewind section, and then hit the fast forward later on. And so there will be a timestamp in the description. So if you don't want to hear the rewind section, you can find the timestamp there to be able to fast forward to the fast forward section and listen to the current news. But as I mentioned, we'll start off by going back to 1998, and this will be March 2nd, 1998, and this is Raw 249. And it took place in Cleveland, Ohio, and it got a 3.75 rating. So the rating's up a little bit compared to the past couple weeks, but um, once you know, see the show, or if you remember stuff from last week, you'll know why the rating's up, because Mike Tyson is on this week. And so the show kicks off with a replay of all the events that have gone on between Stone Cold, Shawn Michaels, and Mike Tyson over like the past two months since Mike Tyson made his appearance and everything and was announced to be the enforcer for the match. And so it's been like all their shenanigans from the press conference to Stone Cold confronting Tyson in the ring and everything with Shawn Michaels going on. Um, so just all that to start off the show and then we get the show opening and then we come back and DX ends up coming out to the ring and so to start it off Triple H um, it's a whole, whole promo segment here but Triple H starts it off and he's just saying you know we announced last week that Wrestlemania is now going to be X rated and that Owen has been walking around as a fake European champion and I'm going to go through him like a knife through butter claiming you know that he's going to be taking his title back at their match at Wrestlemania and then he passes the microphone off to Sean and Sean of course begins with Tyson and he says that when Tyson arrives we will give him an offer that he can't refuse so obviously he's working up some sort of shenanigans to get Tyson either on his side or to help him out some way in the match uh, but we'll just have to see what that is until later on and then he transitions over to Stone Cold and he says you know that Stone Cold isn't tough enough to be HBK and that he will dance to the sound of sweet chin music so just you know saying yo he's gonna hit him with the sweet chin music and beat him at WrestleMania. And so because of that, that caused Stone Cold to come out. And he comes out to the ring. And so he gets in the face of Sean. And they're just kind of staring each other down. Jaw jacking to each other. And the arena ends up going dark. And Kane and Paul Bear end up coming out onto the entrance ramp. Because if you remember last week, Paul Bear put out a challenge to Stone Cold. To a match tonight to prove that Kane's, you know, the stronger guy or something. I don't remember exactly what he worded it as. But it was noted by commentary that as Kane and Paul Bear were coming out and stuff that DX has left the arena so they've left Stone Cold in the ring alone. But Paul Bear ends up kind of promo saying that Stone Cold doesn't need to worry about WrestleMania because tonight he will have to face Kane and Kane's going to send him straight to hell. And then they end up leaving and stuff just setting up the preview for later on tonight for the main event. And after they leave, Stone Cold leaves the ring and gets over on commentary. And as he's going over, he grabs Michael Cole's headphones and then pushes him off the chair onto the floor. So they're still at this point kind of just messing around and pushing Michael Cole around and everything. But he mentions that um, he'll be Kane whether it's in the dark or light and just keeps making comments about being in the dark and light and everything. And then at the end, he just gets up on commentary table and does the double bird to the crowd and everything and leaves. Then we go to the back where we have a limo pulling into the arena and Mike Tyson and Shane McMahon end up getting out of it. So it's shown that Tyson has arrived at the arena. Then we get a replay of the Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie attack on the New Age Outlaws car last week when they were trying to leave and Michael Cole was trying to interview him and stuff and they were ignoring him and so they got in the car and was getting ready to leave and then Cactus and Chainsaw ended up attacking. So we got that whole footage. And then that leads into the New Age Outlaws end up coming out to the ring. And as they're walking out, they're wearing neck braces and stuff. So they're just trying to play that they're injured and everything from last week. Um, as they're walking down, they kind of look at it and notice. But it's there's a dumpster at ringside. So I thought it was kind of weird that there's a dumpster there for some unknown reason. And they throw the footage from last week. And this time it's the footage that Road Dog was recording. So again, if you remember the last week, I mentioned that Road Dog was holding a like camcorder the whole time. And I didn't know why. But I guess he recorded this whole footage from that. So it's that perspective of the attack, you know, shown from inside the car and everything. And it comes back and they're just talking about how they won't wrestle tonight. And they have doctor's excuses because they were of their injury and everything while they're wearing the neck braces. And Sergeant Slaughter ends up appearing up on the Titantron and he orders the Outlaws to have the match tonight because they're lying about the whole thing and they, they're not injured and they have no doctor's excuse. And so then that starts playing the DOA music and so our next match then is the New Age Outlaws taking on Skull and 8-Ball of the DOA. So very early on in the match, the Outlaws neck braces on both guys end up falling off because they just start all fighting together. 
But eventually, Billy Gunn ends up hitting one of them with the title belt, so kind of takes that one out. And then the Outlaws are teaming up on the other guy, because again, Skull and Abel are t- like twins. I can't tell the difference. I don't know which one's which. But they're beating up the other, double teaming the other guy, and they get him to the outside and end up throwing him into the dumpster. As soon as they hit him into the dumpster and start to go after him, the lids come popping open, and Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie pop out from inside of the dumpster, and they hop out, and the Outlaws go running out through the crowd, and so the ref does the count and the DOA gets the win by count out. The next up we got a video on the Sable and Mark Marrow issues that are going on between the two of having issues of Marrow thinking Sable's trying to steal a spotlight and everything. And then that leads to our next matchup Mark Marrow versus Tom Brandy and Sable ends up coming out with Marrow as usual but Marrow stops her like halfway up the ramp and notices that she's there because he came out thinking she wasn't but notices her stops her and sends her to the back. And then he gets to the ring and the match starts. Well, eventually soon into the match, Luna ends up coming out to ringside. And she's just out at ringside the whole time. And she's kind of like cheering Marrow on. Um, well, Marrow eventually tries to go for a TKO, but Brandy's able to get out of it. And then as Brandy's bouncing off the ropes, Luna ends up grabbing his leg. And so he turns around and is like hanging out the ring, yelling at her. And she ends up slapping him in the face. And as he comes back, Marrow hits a low blow onto him because that's what he does for some reason. And then he picks him up and hits the TKO on him to get the win. And after the win, Luna ends up coming into the ring and she's just celebrating with Marrow and stuff. And he's kind of looking at her weird like, why are you here? And she ends up kissing him, so she's kissing him and everything. Well, Goldust ends up running out because of that, and he attacks Marrow from behind. And both him and Luna start beating him up, so it's kind of like a whole ploy or something that Luna was kind of like getting Marrow distracted and thinking she was on his side, but then he she just kind of turned on him. And because of that, Sable ends up running out, so she gets in the ring and starts attacking Luna, and they're just fighting around with each other. But as they get him separated stuff, Marrow gets that Sable and starts yelling at her again for coming out, saying, you know, I don't need your help, and I told you to stay in the back and everything. And Sable ends up pushing Mark Marrow down once again, and then uh, she starts yelling at him and everything, and she kind of just, like, chases him out of the ring. Like, she's on him so much that he kind of runs from her, and then they all just leave the ring. Then we go to our next match of Owen Hart taking on Mark Henry, who, of course, comes out with the Nation. But as they get to the ring, Sergeant Slaughter ends up coming out, and he sends the Nation to the back again, so Henry's out there all by himself. And with Slaughter doing that, it kind of distracts Henry's inside the ring. And as soon as they start to leave, Owen attacks Mark Henry from behind and he starts attacking his legs, of course, trying to take the big guy down and try and, you know, remove his str- some of his strength from him. Well, during the match, China ends up coming down the ramp, which, of course, causes a distraction on Owen and that allows Mark Henry to get the upper hand in the match. But eventually, Owen tries to go for a sharpshooter, but Mark Henry ends up kicking out of it. And I think he does that multiple times. And then on the third time, Owen actually gets the sharpshooter on. But as he's doing that, China ends up getting up on the apron, which causes Owen to release the hold. And Owen's yelling at her to get down and to go to the back and leave him alone and everything. And Owen starts to go up to the top rope to do a move and China gets up on the apron and pushes him off. And he falls into Mark Henry's arms and Mark Henry puts a bear hug on him from there. And then China eventually gets into the ring and hits a low blow on Mark Henry. So that allows Mark Henry to get the win by disqualification since China did it to Henry, which would be helping out Owen. It caused Owen to lose the match. Then we go to the backstage area where we have Vince McMahon talking to Mike Tyson. Just building that up for later on still. Then we go to our next match of Taka Michinoku and the Headbangers. And they're going to be taking on the Rock and Roll Express and Barry Windham. And so before the match starts, the Headbangers cut a promo on the Rock and Roll Express about how they were fans of them when they were kids. And that the Rock and Roll is now old and this isn't the 80s anymore. And then of course reference to them being the Headbangers and the current music or whatever there in the 90s and stuff. And it not being the 80s. And then they throw it over to Taka who ends up calling Jim Cornette a jackass. And then the match starts and not long into it, chaos ends up breaking out so everyone's just all fighting with each other. And four of the guys are on the outside and the two are inside, the legal men are inside. And Thrasher ends up stealing the racket away from Cornette because he kind of like scares him and or hits him or something and knocks Cornette down. And the Cornette throws the racket up in the air after he gets hit and stuff and Thrasher catches it and ends up hitting Robert Gibson with it and is able to get the pin on him because the ref was distracted with all the other guys fighting on the outside. And so the Headbangers get another win there over the Rock and Roll Express. 
And that leads us into hour number two, and it kicks off with the big segment of Vince McMahon bringing out Mike Tyson. And so Vince just starts talking up Mike Tyson about being the special enforcer and all sorts of, kind of like his accolades and everything, just to make him a credible person. And then he ends up asking Mike Tyson who he thinks will win the match, and as Tyson starts the answer, DX music starts playing and interrupts him. And so the DX ends up coming out to the ring. Sean gets in the ring, gets face to face with Tyson, and he says, allow me to introduce myself, I'm Shawn Michaels, and all sorts of stuff, and he ends up calling Mike Tyson out to a fight, but Tyson goes, you know, let's do this right now, and stuff, and so they start preparing, so DX ends up leaving, or the other guys beside Sean end up leaving, and Mike Tyson ends up sending his guys out of the ring, so it's just Sean and Tyson in the ring by themselves to fight. And so Sean and Tyson start squaring off and they start shoving each other and start getting face to face and everything. And Sean ends up grabbing Tyson by the sh um, neck of his shirt and is like got his other hand out like he's getting ready to punch him and everything. Tyson's like, come on, hit me and everything. And he ends up putting his other hand on the neck and just ripping the shirt off to reveal that Mike Tyson is wearing a DX shirt underneath the shirt he's wearing, which I believe was just like a WWF shirt or something. So that is the big swerve and I guess the big offer Sean had for him was to join DX. And so now Mike Tyson is a member of DX. And so they start just doing crop chops all over the ring and everything, and they're doing them at Vince, which makes Vince angry and stuff, and he has an angry look on his face, and he ends up, of course, leaving towards the back, and as they're going on and everything, he's standing up at the top of the ramp, just all mad and angry and stuff, because once again, his plans with Tyson have been foiled by a person. First, it was Stone Cold the first time, now it's DX again. So Sean has gotten Tyson on his side to try and help him out in the match against Stone Cold. You know, since he's a special enforcer and stuff, he can maybe play with some of the rules and everything to help Sean out in the match. So we go to commercial and then come back and it shows DX and Mike Tyson back in the locker room. And they're just kind of celebrating everything that Tyson has joined DX and all that. Uh, we come back out and we got a match of Steve Blackman taking on Kama because, of course, Steve Blackman has been taking on different members of the nation and he beat The Rock last week with Distraction and Everything by Farouk. So it's going to be him against Kama this week. Um, once again, Kama came out with the nation, but as they get to the ring, Sergeant Slaughter ends up coming out and sending the nation to the back. So it's just Kama all by himself out there. Overall, the match is pretty boring. Nothing really special happens or any cool moves or anything. Uh, but at one point, Blackman puts the submission move on to Kama, but the nation it comes running out. So it gives a distract or causes a distraction or whatever, disqualification, and Steve Blackman gets the win because of it. And so the nation just start beating up Steve Blackman, and Ken Shamrock comes running out to help him, and they chase the nation off. We come back again and we have a guy standing in the ring who we've never seen before on WWF. But of course I know who it is because I've seen this part know who the guy is and everything. But it's uh, Tennessee Lee and he's out here to interview the new Jeff Jarrett. And so Jeff Jarrett ends up coming out and uh, he's dressed in his old Double J gimmick. And so he's got the light up hat and glasses and all sorts of stuff. Um, so he's just pretty much back in his old gimmick and I think has old music and stuff. And so he's just talking about the NWA being on their own and hoping he, they do well and everything now since he left the NWA. As mentioned last week when he said, we, I need to go separate ways from Cornette. And then he ends up introducing the crowd to Tennessee Lee as his new promoter. And so Tennessee Lee was Colonel Parker, I think it was. In WCW, he was with Harlem Heat for a while and stuff and managed different groups and everything. But that was the last time we saw him. And so that leads into the next match of Jeff Jarrett, and he's going to be taking on Flash Funk. Overall, it's a pretty boring match, and nothing really good happens, but Flash starts to go up to do the 450 splash, but Tennessee Lee gets up on the apron and pulls on one of his legs, which causes Flash to be crotched on the top rope, and Tennessee Lee pushes him, and he falls over headfirst onto the ring, which allows Jarrett to go over and put on the figure four and get the win. Then next up, we get a video introducing the next guest, to the Wrestlemania and it's Jennifer Flowers which I don't know a whole lot about her but I believe she was like a person that came out against Bill Clinton or something that claims that she was someone that he cheated with her or something I don't know the whole thing but she just claimed that she slept with Bill Clinton or something I believe is what she's done and so it kind of made her famous from that and so now she's going to be at Wrestlemania I guess. Then we go to the back again and Michael Cole is in the parking lot and he's there to interview DX and Mike Tyson as they're walking to the limo. And they're saying how Tyson ended up joining DX because he wanted to be with winners. And then as he's getting into the limo he says that Stone Cold will get knocked out at Wrestlemania. So continuing on the build and issues of Tyson and Stone Cold going on there. 
Then we got a little video on the LOD breakup, so the, we saw last week or the week before, I can't remember exactly when it was, but of their breakup, and then it shows some of their history and their past in the WWF, and mentioned some other past things like the NWA and stuff as well. So just kind of reminding people of LOD and their history and everything, and how good of a tag team they were. And that then leads into our main event for the night of Kane coming out with Paul Bear, who's going to be taking on Stone Cold. So they come out and Paul Bear ends up cutting a promo in the ring and then Stone Cold eventually comes out and as he walks out onto the, st he comes out on the stage and stuff, kind of looks to the, what would be his right side. So if you're looking at the stage, it'd be on the left, but if you're looking at the arena from the stage, it's on the right. And he sees something to the right and then he kind of stops and then heads over that way and the camera kind of pans over and you see Triple H stand there. I'm like, why is Triple H standing there? And he like starts to grab for Triple H and then all of a sudden from behind Shawn Michaels comes up and super kicks Stone Cold and they kind of lay him out there on top of the stage. And so a bunch of officials come out and help get Stone Cold up and they help him to the back and everything. And then we go to commercial and we'll come back and commentaries mention that Stone Cold is in the back searching for DX and causing chaos in the back there. And then it goes to the ring and shows that Kane and Paul Bear are still in the ring. And so Paul Bear starts cutting a promo again and he tells Kane to go out and get the bell. And so Kane goes out to get the bell and I don't know exactly what went on here. But you see Kane start to go for like where they, you know, have the timekeeper and bell and all that sort of stuff. All of a sudden he grabs a hold of a fan at ringside and picks him up over the railing and then just starts beating him up on the outside. So I don't know if it was a fan that like grabbed Kane or something and Kane pulled him over and just was beating him up and he like threw him into the ring steps and everything. But by the way it looked like he was attacking him, it looked like he wasn't really a attacking him like it was maybe a plant or something i don't know why he would do it because it didn't serve for any part he thought maybe he was going to grab the fan and throw him in the ring or something but he didn't so i don't know what the whole point was so kane eventually goes over and grabs the bell and paul baron tells him to grab the guy too so i just call him the bell ringer i don't know what if he was the timekeeper or whatever but he tells kane to grab him too so he grabs both of them and uh, throws the bell into the ring then takes the bell ringer guy and throws him into the ring and so Paul Bear orders the guy to toll the bell 10 times for respect for the Undertaker. And so the guy starts telling the tolling the bell and everything. And so the guy rings the bell 10 times and then Paul Bear orders Kane to attack him. And so Kane grabs the guy, choke slams him, and then hits a tombstone on him. And then Paul Bear starts talking about how Kane has one tombstone left tonight. And so he starts looking around for someone to do it. And so, of course, he looks at commentary and he says, you know, Jerry the King Lawler or JR, either of you want to step up and do it. And so he's asking for someone to step up to take the tombstone and the lights end up going out and the bell starts gonging. So for Undertaker's bell, and of course, Paul Bear's like, OK, real funny. We know he's not here. He's gone and everything just keeps doing that. Well, all of a sudden it pans up to the stage where there's a coffin on the stage and they're like, what is that? And everything, of course, there's commentary saying it. And all of a sudden a bolt of lightning comes down from the ceiling and hits the coffin and the coffin explodes into a bunch of pieces and Undertaker is laying on a platform there and Paul Berry saying, you know, that's not him and everything. And Undertaker ends up sitting up and standing up and everything. And so Taker stand there and he's just cutting a promo on Kane and stuff. Talking about how he wasn't dead. He just left on a journey to visit his parents in hell and every or wherever. I assume he said hell or something. But that makes Kane mad. And so Kane lifts his hand and does his like normal stuff where he rift, lifts his hand and slams down. And usually fire goes off. Well he does that well a bunch of fire goes off on the stage. And Undertaker just ends up walking through it. And so they're setting up that, you know, there's mystical powers with Kane and fire and all sorts of stuff. And Undertaker continues on with his promo and he pretty much just ends up saying that he will fight Kane at WrestleMania. So we have that match set up there and I just thought that was awesome. Then there. Overall, this show wasn't that good, I would say. Um, I was very bored until, of course, the stuff with Tyson happened. That, of course, picked up the show. And then the very end with The Undertaker, because that's one of my favorite stuff when Undertaker and Kane start using their power, their mystical powers, powers of the darkness, whatever you want to call it. Their um, special powers that they use. I love when they have that sort of stuff. And we get Undertaker back now from his break off after the Royal Rumble. And so now we get a build up there for you even more preparing for WrestleMania. And so that stuff helped save the show. And again, that Tyson and then probably the Undertaker and stuff is what got the show such a high rating. Still not better than Nitro yet. We still have another month or so until then. But at least it was up from what it's been. 
So that's it for the rewind section, but before we get into the fast forward, I just want to remind you some of our plugs. Don't forget you can find the show on iTunes where you can subscribe and download on the podcast app on Apple. You can listen to it through SoundCloud and you can follow us there. Or you can listen on YouTube where we have all our episodes and you can subscribe there to see not only the Monday Night Rewind podcast, but all our other videos that we put up throughout the week. Don't forget in the links below, you can find our Patreon and Teespring link where you can find us there on Awesome Nerd Show on both of those. And on Teespring, you can get a shirt with the podcast logo on it. And then there's also links to follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Awesome Nerd Show on both of those that you can do as well. So that's going to be it for the rewind. Let's go ahead and get into the fast forward. So we had some more news this week compared to last week, but nothing really major that went on. So of course on Sunday we had the Elimination Chamber, and so um, I thought the show overall was pretty good. I didn't think too many, ma- I didn't think really any of the matches were that boring. Just to run down, so we had the Women's Elimination Chamber match, which I actually really enjoyed. I thought that was a pretty good match. I mean, it wasn't like super amazing or anything, but I thought it was pretty good. But we had Alexa end up retaining the title there by beating Sasha Banks as the last elimination. And then we also, throughout the match, we saw Sasha kind of turn and attack Bailey and kick her off the top of the pod and everything. And so I thought that was kind of interesting that they're uh, maybe turning Sasha heel, possibly, and building up a feud with Bailey, which the Sasha and Bailey takeover match from a couple years ago I, is one of my, f- probably my favorite women's match of all time. Like, when I watch it, I'm like, wow, that's the best women's match I've ever seen. And so to see them feud again, I think would be amazing, and I really like that. Then we had uh, the bar end up beating Titus Worldwide, so nothing major there. Oscar beat Nia Jax, which is you know as I expect because I don't expect them. Then Oscar's winning streak yet. Uh, Bray Wyatt versus Matt Hardy, which was nothing really special, but I thought it was a really good match. Like I thought it was entertaining. They didn't weren't boring or anything like that, and so I thought it was definitely the best match they've had so far. And I can't wait with like stuff. On Twitter that Matt Hardy's been hinting at that they're going to be going to the Hardy compound possibly. Which you know keeps being hinted at and teased and everything. But I think they may actually finally be going there. So I can't wait to see that because I love the broken Matt Hardy stuff and the stuff they did in TNA and everything. Then we had the Ronda Rousey contract signing, which was kind of interesting. Um, I think it was pretty good. Like, it was a lot better than I expected. And Ronda, I didn't think was too bad. And, of course, when she started out trying to talk and stuff, I'm like, oh, God, this is kind of cringy that she can't get anything out and stuff. But I guess when it's your first time and if you're a big wrestling fan like she says she is and it's been reported and stuff, I mean, if that was me, I'd be nervous as heck. I can barely talk on this podcast, let alone be in an arena in front of, you know, thousands of people. But we got through, and of course, Kurt Angle ended up kind of stooging off Stephanie and Triple H that this was a whole plan by them to get back at Ronda and stuff. And then that got Ronda out of her giddiness or whatever to be there and got her like in a serious face and stuff and made her look, or she started looking angry and everything. And of course, she ended up putting Triple H through the table that they signed on or whatever and stuff. So I just thought it was good and entertaining, and I thought this was a good way to introduce Rhonda. Of course, I don't really care about, like I mentioned in the past when talking about her on these podcasts, I don't really care much about her, so I guess um, they're going to have to make me want to see her fight and everything, and they're starting to do that. I still don't really care that much, but I'm more interested than what I was. And then we had the Men's Elimination Chamber, which as everyone expected, Roman Reigns ended up winning And so he's going to be facing Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, where I know he'll win because that's what we've been building to for multiple years now. So that's no surprise that all of this is happening. And then we'll move on to Raw. And so Raw had some pretty newsworthy stuff. Um, So first newsworthy thing we had was John Cena's promo. So of course he was kind of promo about how he lost at Elimination Chamber. So now his WrestleMania outlook isn't so good because that was his only way to get into WrestleMania, even though it's, you know, John Cena, he's going to, he has no problem being at WrestleMania because he's like the number one person in the company. And so he's going to be at WrestleMania in some form or fashion. But he's talking about how he has no other way now. And of course, so he's like, I only got one thing left to do. And so he calls out The Undertaker her to a match and so the crowd starts going crazy and he's like but i've been told that's not going to happen which i'm hoping that's the truth and not just some line that they're doing because you know i've heard people say oh he's just they're just saying that and undertaker's eventually gonna show up and they're gonna have the match 
I love The Undertaker. If you know anything about me, Undertaker has been my favorite wrestler and the person that drew me into wrestling since I was a little kid. I used to be terrified of him, but it seems like everything I'm super terrified of ends up drawing me in. Like, I'm also, like, super terrified of Michael Myers and the Halloween movies, but yet they're my absolute favorite horror movies of all time. Um, but so Undertaker is my absolute favorite person in the world. Like, I want to meet The Undertaker. And I want to be at WrestleMania or any show where it's his last match and everything, and I all these plans in my head of what I'd want as Undertaker's final match and everything but after what we saw last year I do not want to see Undertaker wrestle again like it just made me sad just seeing him and how he could barely move and if especially if you've watched the Wrestlemania 24 thing they did on the network you see Undertaker just limping around before the match and it's like I don't want to see him back again I don't care even if he's you know fixed his hip and all sorts of stuff I don't want to see him back and in more pain and everything but Cena said it wouldn't happen, so he's now would have to move on to SmackDown to try and get in the WrestleMania there. So we'll talk about SmackDown here in a minute. Uh, then we had Roman Reigns in up kind of promo, which many people have said have, was the promo of his life. I haven't heard it. I meant to look it up and watch it just to see exactly what he said. But apparently it's the best Roman Reigns we've seen. You know, the closest thing to the, a star and number one person in the company, Roman Reigns. So hopefully if it is, he, that he can continue on with that. But the whole big thing was with Brock, how Brock was a no-show and they kept advertising that Brock would be there. And so it's been speculated, you know, did Brock actually no-show or was it just a whole plan thing to give Roman something to talk about as a promo section and stuff. And of course there was the picture of Brock and Dana White from UFC being posted because it's rumored you know, that after WrestleMania Brock's going to be leaving to go back to UFC. So who knows what's going to be happening and going on there, but they um, kind of building up this whole thing to kind of get people on Reigns' side instead of Brock and paint Brock as the heel in this match. And I think by that they're going to be doing good, but I still don't care. I don't really care about either one of them. And then the ending of the show, we had an update and continuation of the Ronda Rousey stuff and Kurt Angle and Triple H and Stephanie, where um, Kurt Angle said, you know, that he is double pneumonia or whatever and that he was lying about the whole thing and that Stephanie apologizes to Ronda and everything and as the segment ended and stuff Triple H ended up punching Kurt Angle kind of like out of nowhere and so I assume we're building up the match of Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle against Triple H and Stephanie for WrestleMania I assume that it is going to be Angle as Rousey's partner if he's you know healthy enough because last time at TLC he wasn't look TLC and Survivor Series, he wasn't looking too good and moving in the ring, but I heard he was somewhat injured at that point too, so may, hopefully he's all better now and fixed up and he could actually be in this match if they do go with him. And then that'll lead us into SmackDown, which the only real thing was there was the John Cena stuff, who came out, you know, saying that he's once away to be at WrestleMania through SmackDown, and so he ends up wanting a match to join or do something to join the Fatal Five Way match at Fastlane for AJ's title, and so they end up putting him in a match against AJ that night, who he ended up beating. So Cena beat AJ on SmackDown, and so now it's going to be whatever they call a six way match for the WWE title at Fastlane. So Cena's hoping he can win that match to get into the main event or whatever of WrestleMania against Nakamura instead of AJ, and that could be his way into WrestleMania. Then in some other WWE-related news, um, we had rumors through Dave Meltzer and everything that Bobby Lashley has signed a contract to return to WWE, and so I assume with everything going on, he won't be if he did sign, he won't be coming back until after WrestleMania, which it kind of sinks because if Brock does end up leaving, I've always wanted to see a match between Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar. So I hope Brock possibly stays around for a little bit or resigns or something so we can see that match at some point because, you know, they're both MMA fighters and Brock does UFC and Bobby Lashley does Bellator. And so to see the two companies kind of come face to face or whatever would be pretty interesting. And then the other news is that Rey Mysterio has been at SmackDown related stuff. Some people were saying he was at SmackDown, but others were saying he was at the SmackDown house show on Monday. But it's saying that Mysterio was there and he was uh, working on contract details and everything and that he could possibly be facing John Cena at WrestleMania. So instead of Undertaker, it could be Rey Mysterio, which I would much rather see that match. And after seeing Rey Mysterio in the Royal Rumble and how good he was moving and everything, I would like to see him in a match against John Cena. So I have no issues with that, and I think it would be cool. 
And then our last piece of news goes on to New Japan. And so I guess it's not last piece. There's just a couple of pieces. Um, but at the recent pay-per-view for New Japan, the Golden Lovers, which is Kenny Omega and Kota Ibushi, ended up beating Cody Rhodes and Hangman Page in their match. Because, of course, this was the first match of the Golden Lovers to take on members of the Bullet Club. And it's kind of the people they're feuding with of Cody Rhodes and then his kind of a crony guy of Hangman Page and everything. So the Golden Lovers got the win there. And then it was announced that the Young Bucks will announce that they would be moving up in weight classes. Instead of being junior heavyweights, they'd be heavyweights. And that they're going to be taking on the Golden Lovers at the Strong Style Evolve show here in the U.S. or in California and stuff. So that's another big match added to the show of getting the Young Bucks against Kenny Omega. Of course, their friend and everything. So that'll be interesting to see. I really want to see the show, but they just had to put it on Sunday night. Where I'd have to go, um, we don't have Access TV and we don't have New Japan World or whatever the streaming service is. So we'd have to go to our parents' house because they have Access and that's where we go to watch a lot of New Japan stuff. And they live over an hour away so to drive an hour and stuff, watch the pay-per-view that night and come back and everything. They have to go to work the next morning. That's not going to be feasible for us and so it's either get the streaming service or just not watch it. So we'll have to see what we do when that comes later this month. And then it was also announced that Hangman Page will be taking on Jay White for the U.S. title at that paper or at that show as well. Um, so that's kind of, I don't know if I said, but it was the U.S. title. I don't know what I said for sure. Um, but so that's, I don't really care. I, Jay White's okay. He's nothing special in my opinion, but he's not bad either. And then Hangman Page is again, nothing special, but not bad either. So that's just kind of an okay match to throw on there along with the Rey Mysterio versus Jushin La Thunder Liger match. So I think that show's kind of building up to be a pretty good show that, like I said, I kind of want to see. But I think that's it for the news. I couldn't really see much of anything else that was big or noteworthy in wrestling news and stuff. But that's all that I got. So I hope you enjoyed this show today. Don't forget to check out all the links down below. And don't forget you can follow the podcast on Apple Podcast app and SoundCloud as long as on YouTube as well under Awesome Nerd Show. But please do some of that somewhere you subscribe to wherever you can. And I thank you for listening and we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>